Every Monday morning in Lalomanu village, kava, called ava here in Samoa, is made ready for the ceremonial opening of the village council. At the start of the week, all the titled men, the heads of family clans, that is to say, meet in the pillared valley to discuss the affairs of their district. Receiving the Ava Cup, a libation is poured as though this were a meeting in pre-classical Greece. Today's tropical Polynesia maintains much ancient tradition. Essentially a social drink, Ava is said to stimulate good conversation. Before drinking, a toast is always spoken. So the Arba ceremony unites the heads of families into one family for the morning's conference. <laughs> Another sound on the morning air in Lalo Manu is that of a song in English by the youngest school children. Also in session at Lalo Manu is a meeting of the Women's Committee to hear a health talk. You'll remember when I was last here how we spoke of the value of having green vegetables in the diet, how it was very important to uh, use them so that we could build up a good healthy constitution while you were expecting your baby. It is also important for you to have, it, have vegetables for your infants as they are growing older from six months onwards. The women's committees are important in Samoan progress. There are many duties besides the raising of families that are traditionally women's work. The roofing of houses, for example. Land is held by families. Cultivation and high altitude harvesting are carried out by members of the family, each receiving a share of the produce. The coconut palm gives meat, drink and roofing material, so with all growing their own food, no one need lack for necessities. For such services as schools and hospitals, and for imports of all kinds, money is needed. Cash crops include bananas, cocoa and copra. In a good year, Samoan knives slice out coconut meat, which, when dried, is worth a million pounds sterling. Increased production of all cash crops is important to the economy. Bananas go to New Zealand in crates bearing the names of the village of origin. Copra goes mainly to England and cocoa to all parts of the world. Fortnightly consignment gives the menfolk a chance of a regular trip along the coast road to the capital and port of Apia.
Passed from German to New Zealand rule in 1914, these islands have, since 1946, been United Nations Trust Territory. New Zealand administration here has earned frequent praise from the Trusteeship Council. 16,000 of Western Samoa's 100,000 people live in Apia, the capital, where the most colourful times are days of parades when all the bands are in town. have been assisted to achieve their aims and aspirations under the overall shield of British tradition. An address from New Zealand's representative, the High Commissioner. At nearby Samoa College, the colourful times are any time when games are in progress. These islands have such a high birth rate that half the population is under 16, and so pupils are numerous. All over the world, children who study English read books or poems written here. Above Samoa College, on the very summit of Mount Vaia, is the tomb of Robert Louis Stevenson, whose memory Samoan children know by his island name of Tusitala. Far below is Vailima, Stevenson's last home. Today, Vailima is the residence of the New Zealand High Commissioner. Tomorrow, in self-governing Western Samoa, it will always remain a place of importance. Another early European-style building is the 70-year-old church at Saleamoa. Villages replacing a roof damaged by infestation show that there is Christian zeal enough here to defeat even termites. Both repairs and building are done by voluntary village labour. At Ulutongia, a fine new church is just being completed. Soon, Ulu Tongia Church is ready for opening, and the people of neighbouring Lalo Manu will be on their way bearing the customary gift of a fine mat as they come to assist at the dedication. The elder of the new church unlocks the door. More than half the Western Samoans belong to the London Missionary Society, and all are Christians. Whenever a band contest is held, a hymn tune is always amongst those chosen. Health system accompanies a Samoan district nurse and others on a visit to some of the smaller islands. New Zealand gives much assistance and advice to her trust territory in medical and other matters. The party approaches Apolima, much of which is rather barren lava. The people of Apolima live on a patch of good land near a harbour formed by the crater of the volcano which built their island. At Manono Island, the government health officers go ashore. The women's committee of this small island have helped raise a thousand pounds towards building their own hospital, and part of official business today is to approve the site. At the chief's house, where the visitors take Ava, a dozen bags of cement are piled, as tokens of the island's firm intention to go ahead with the building of the hospital. When this is completed, there will no longer be need for patients to be taken by sea to Apia.
The General Hospital in Apia, which includes a nurse's training school, is the main medical center. In accident or sickness, Samoans can call on all that Western medicine has to offer. Two or three dozen nurses complete their training each year. The hospital includes maternity services and a baby clinic. For such professions as nursing, a good general education is important, and increasing numbers of children are studying for the New Zealand school certificate. All right, Sammy, can you come up and do, do the um, diagram on the board for problems? What are you going to do first? I'm going to put down the that angle turned. Now class, this is the passage we have studied on a modern hydroelectric plant. Now how does it differ from most factories and other industrial establishments? Nirani? In a modern hydroelectric plant, very few men are employed and almost all of them do work of a skilled type. Darlene, would you tell us the purpose of this experiment? This is one of the methods of purifying water for distillation, whereby the water in the flask evaporates and then condenses over here and collects in this beaker. And all the dissolved mineral matter remains in the flask. Very good, Naomi. The opening of a new school is always cause for celebration, with neighboring villagers again bringing the customary gift of a fine mat to their hosts. This time, the new school has been built by the village of Salilese, on whose malai pigs, barrels of meat and other foods pile up ready for the feast. The director of education opens the door. The people of Salilese want this known as Naila school, Naila being Samoan for the river Nile, implying that the school is to stimulate the minds of the young people, just as the Nile refreshes the fertile fields of Egypt. The school is open, the food is ready, and the songs and dances begin. school has been well and truly inaugurated. Though schools tell of the great world outside Samoa, the island's own government is a subject of importance. This diagram shows how the uh, government of Western Samoa works. At meetings of the Executive Council, Samoan members have already had many years' experience of making important decisions. In 1960, the council will have the powers and duties of a parliamentary cabinet. At present, it meets under the chairmanship of the New Zealand High Commissioner, His Excellency Mr. G. R. Pohl, CMG. Confirms the minutes, then. The next item on the agenda is to continue our consideration of the report of the visiting mission from the Trusteeship Council. We come to the section on agriculture. The most basic New Zealand aid to agriculture is the soil survey. The reason for our visit here, Chief, we have come all from New, from New Zealand. 
to see your soil and to see if we can understand all about the soil so that maybe there's something we can do to help you grow more food crops. Starting point for soil survey work is the aerial map. The men travel all over the islands. Frequent samples are bagged, recorded and sent down to New Zealand for chemical and physical analysis. On great occasions, everyone comes to the historic center of Samoan society at Mulanu. These are the people of Vaimanga bringing gifts of pigs and coconuts for the annual flag-raising ceremony. The flag raising is held the day after Her Majesty the Queen's birthday, and as the day proceeds, Samoan customs alternate with British ones. In mutual courtesy, the New Zealand High Commissioner hoists the Samoan flag while a leading Samoan, the Honourable Tupua Tamasese CBE, hoists the flag of New Zealand. Here the customs of two peoples are observed, with the two flags a symbol of partnership. In a few years the flag of Samoa will be alone at the peak, and Samoan young people are busy gaining the skills that will be needed to run the affairs of their own tropical islands. For them, beneath the wind in the palms, schools teach not only the ways of the great world, but also the ways of ancient Samoa, their own exclusive heritage. This, then, is Samoa, home of the most numerous island people of the resurgent Polynesian race. Here, amidst leaf and branch, over rock and coral, each new day blossoms like one more flower on the living tree of tradition.